As an example, let's start with a new VI. We can access the VI properties again either by right clicking up here where the icon is and choosing VI properties or from the file menu choosing VI properties. Notice there's also a keyboard shortcut to using control I. Let's just do a very brief tour of the items available in VI properties. From the category selector we have a choice of multiple options. Starting with general General shows the location and the current revision of the particular VI that we're looking at. Also allows direct access to the icon editor. In addition, there's a revision history, which depending on your LabVIEW settings will either be automatically generating revisions or prompting you to manually enter in revision information every time you save a VI. Next, there's the memory usage tab, which tells how much memory is being used by that VI both for front panel and block diagram objects, as well as, very importantly, for the amount of data being held in a VI. Next, documentation. The documentation field allows us to enter in information pertaining to your VI, as well as a help tag and a path if you want to directly link it to an external help file. It's a feature which is useful if you're deploying applications and you want to include with it a particular help file and have the ability to go directly to that help via the context help window within LabVIEW. The revision history allows you to choose how that VI asks for and stores its revision history. If you choose the default history settings, it's from the LabVIEW options, or you can manually override those ask that it add an entry every time the VI is saved, prompt for a comment whenever it's either closed or saved, and record any comments generated by LabVIEW. In addition from this tab, we can choose to view the current revision history, and we see this screen here. We have the editor options, which chooses the alignment grid size for both for front panel and block diagram. Chooses the default control style for whenever we create a control or an indicator, whether it's modern, classic, or system. Next, we have the protection tab, which chooses whether the VI has any security attached to it. First, we have the choice whether it's unlocked, or secondly, locked, which means that they must manually unlock it before you can edit it. Or thirdly, password protected. This is where we have the option to enter in a password, which must be entered before we can view the block diagram of the VI. Note that we can run a VI even if it is password protected, but we cannot look at the code or edit it. Of course, we have the option to change the password. You must enter the password before you can change it, and then you can enter in any value you wish. Next, window appearance. This is a very important point, and we're going to get to that in the next section, so we'll return to this. Window size allows us to specify what the minimum panel size is, choose whether or not it maintains the proportions of the window for different monitor resolutions, choose whether it scales all the objects on the front panel as the window resizes. What this does is it allows us to have multiple monitor resolutions and to have LabVIEW automatically enlarge or reduce the size of all the controls on the screen so that it fits every monitor resolution. This particular feature works generally fairly well, but you should always experiment with this before trying, before deploying a system which uses this feature, particularly if you have a large range of monitor sizes. For example, setting this checkbox on and running the VI at 640 by 480 resolution and having it scale to a very high resolution and then back again can often lead to undesired effects. Window runtime position. This chooses where the window is going to be displayed on the screen. You can choose to be unchanged, which means it will leave it in the position where you last saved it, or you can choose to either have it centered, maximized, minimized, or in a custom position. If you choose custom position, then you get to set that position and panel size here. You choose whether you use the current position or specify one, or whether you use the current size or specify one. Also take note, if we choose, for example, centered, we can choose which monitor it appears on. If you happen to have a multiple monitor system, then you can decide which monitor this VI is going to pop up. 
It's important to remember that most subvis do not pop up at all. If you consider a standard piece of LabVIEW code which might have dozens of subvis, most of them are doing something very simple, such as performing some mathematics or some analysis. Even if it's not simple, generally they don't require any user input or provide any user feedback. So it's not necessary to worry about this property unless it is a VI which is going to be displaying information for the user to see or which is going to be requiring the user to provide some input, such as click OK to continue or enter in the value or choose a file name. The next choice is execution. These are some advanced options which we're not going to go into great detail about. For example, you can set the priority of the VI. As a general note, set your most complicated, most time-intensive analysis to be a high priority, and set your VIs which are based more on user input or slower processes to be lower priority. Allowing debugging is important. It allows you to decide whether or not a certain sub-VI can be paused, probed, and have breakpoint placed in it while it's running. Reentrant execution, again, is an advanced topic, but in a nutshell, it means that a VI can call itself. Plus, we have some further um, options based on uh, the reentrant execution selection. Preferred execution system, more advanced issues that allow us to choose which processor thread the execution system runs in. Also, we have the ability to turn on or off the following options enabling automatic error handling, running when opened, suspending when called clear indicators when called, and auto-handle menus at launch. Next, we have some print options. This is only applicable to when we want to print a VI. We can choose whether or not we want to print a header, surround the front panel with a border, scale it to fit the page, scale the block diagram to fit the page, whether we use custom margins, and whether we automatically print the front panel every time it executes. So use this particular checkbox with caution. C code generation options. This is relevant only when you're using certain targets. We're going to be beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about at this time.